What up s'mores? I'm Shannon Morse. Welcome to my YouTube channel all about travel and technology. Today I have a slew of tips and tricks for the Google Pixel 4 XL because there are some new features and it took me a little bit of time to figure out where those were at. So I wanted to save you time and show you where you can find all of these settings and all of these different customizations that you can do so you can get straight into using your new phone and not have to worry about all that weird stuff and have to Google it. So here you go. Now I have 12 different tips and tricks for you. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the first one, which has to do with that smooth display. The Pixel 4 comes with a smooth display, which means that it does go up to 90 hertz. However, it is adaptive. So if you're not doing something that requires 90 hertz, it will step down to 60 hertz and just stick you at that. It does seem to be pretty aggressive when it sticks you down to 60 hertz. So if you want to turn on smooth display and see that 90 hertz, that happens all the time, you go into your settings, go to display and hit advanced and then click on smooth display. And that's where you can enable it or disable it. Now, if I go back to my normal setting screen and I go back down to about phone, scroll all the way to the bottom to build number, you are going to need to click on that several times to become a developer. Now I have a reason for this and I'm gonna show you in just a sec. So we're gonna go back to the settings screen, click on system, click on advanced, then click on developer options. And there's a little notation on here that says force 90 Hertz refresh rate. You wanna click into that and that will force your phone to stay on 90 Hertz 24 seven, which does mean that you will decrease some of that battery, but it also increases the smoothness of your display. Now I have that turned on with my phone. I have noticed a slight battery decrease. However, having dark theme turned on has also increased the battery at the same time. So you end up kind of leveling it out as far as your battery is concerned, even though you have that faster refresh rate turned on to your phone. Now, if you're wondering how to turn on dark theme, that's my next tip. This can be found through your accessibility option. So click on accessibility, scroll down just a bit and you will find dark theme. Now, if I turn that off, you will notice that my entire screen is this gorgeous white. However, if I turn it on, my screen goes back to black, which also turns off all of those pixels basically. So you end up saving a lot of battery life on your phone. Next, you should definitely check out themes. So go to display and then click on styles and wallpapers. You will notice that there's a cute little one in here called snubs. That is a custom theme that I chose to go with that allows me to make little purple icons and it keeps all the little circles and I have a specific font that I like to use at a specific size. So it's allowed me to customize what my entire theme looks like for my phone. You can choose to go with a default theme and there's plenty to choose from. However, if you do wanna create your own custom theme, you can click on custom and it will allow you to change things like the font like your icons, like the color, so I could do a purple theme now, and even the shape of your icons for different applications. So I could do square ones right here. So that would be my second custom theme. And I can change the name on this one to, I'll call it YouTube. That makes no sense, but we're gonna stick with it. Now when I switch over to it, you will notice that all of my icons are now boxes as opposed to circles. I don't like that one that much, so I'm gonna switch back to Snubs theme because Snubs theme looks amazing. See, look at all those little circle icons. That looks so good and it's in pink, which is great. Let's talk about Android 10 gestures. You can either squeeze your phone to open up the assistant, cancel, or you can also swipe up from one of the corners to open up your assistant. You will notice in each of these cases, assistant is running down at the bottom and is trying to figure out why I activated it. There's no reason, so I'm just gonna click out of that right now. You can also do things such as swiping with two fingers to open up your entire menu panel. You can swipe the bottom bar to quickly switch to different applications that you might have open. You can swipe up to go back to your main menu. And if you're curious how you enable those gestures, if you don't already have them turned on, go to system in your menu, go to gestures, and then you can go through each of these and turn them on or off. And it is highly customizable. The next tip is about a feature called lockdown, which I highly recommend that you turn on. To enable this, go into your settings, then click on display, click on advanced, scroll down, and click on lock screen display. 
From here, you will see an option that says show lockdown option. And that says it displays power button option that turns off smart lock and notifications on the lock screen. So if you turn that on, now if you hold down the power button, there will be an option to lock it down. Click on lockdown and that automatically locks your phone. Now face unlock will not work. I have to swipe up, put in my pin code, and then it unlocks the phone. Yay, it's unlocked. That also keeps any notifications from appearing on your lock screen and is a really great option. For example, if you are a journalist that is traveling, if you are a protester, or if you are in an environment where you don't necessarily trust that somebody will keep your phone locked down, while you're using face unlock because face unlock still allows for you to unlock your phone with your eyes closed. So somebody could use it while you're asleep, for example, which is not very good. We're still waiting on an update on that and I will have more once we actually do have an update on face unlock. Now I also wanted to mention to you smart lock. So I'm gonna go into my settings, go down to security and click on smart lock. This is where I'm gonna put in my pin code click enter. Now smart lock allows you to do a couple of different things. You can either keep it unlocked while it's on your body and it has on body detection so it can tell if it's actually on you. You can also have it automatically unlock if you're at a trusted place like your home or your workplace. You can have it unlock near trusted devices like a laptop or you can set it up with voice match so it will only unlock whenever it hears your voice. I like to secure my phone as much as possible. I don't like to keep it unlocked all the time so I just disable smart lock. I don't keep that on at all. Another one that does not affect your security is always on display. You can enable always on display by going to your settings, going to display, lock screen display after clicking on advanced and scrolling down to where it says always on. So this will show you the time, notification icons, and other information on your lock screen while the phone is just asleep, basically. So everything else is off except for little notifications and the time will show up on your screen. Uh, this does increase the battery usage a very small amount, maybe a few percentage per day. So it's not a huge deal breaker and it's something that I found to be very useful because it's basically just seeing a clock out of your peripheral vision whenever you look at it. Next, I have an app recommendation for you. This is the Recorder app, which I did mention in my review, and I wanted to mention it again because it's so freaking cool. It's a wonderful feature on the Pixel 4 line. This records audio live, and it also records a transcript live to your phone, which can be saved and it can be searched. So once I'm done recording my transcript, I can hit pause, for example. I can add a title if I want to. I can click save. I can go into it and listen back to it. I can read the transcript and I can search words if I wanted to. So I'm going to search for the word transcript, click enter, and it will highlight wherever that word is. It also highlights it in the actual audio file so you can see wherever I said that word, which is so freaking cool. Uh, so useful. I can't wait to use this more. It's something that I'm going to be adding to my workflow so that I can start posting like blog posts about the videos that I'm doing. I'm very excited about re the recording app if you didn't notice. Captioning is also incredible and highly accessible too. So this is under accessibility options and then you scroll down and find live caption. So click on live caption and it will basically show you what it does. Uh, live caption will automatically transcribe whatever is on the screen. So if you are watching something and you want to keep it muted, for example, like if you're on a train or at a coffee shop and you don't want to bother anybody, it will automatically show you the live caption underneath that video, which is incredible to me. And I love using this. It's so useful. So if I turn that on and I go over to a YouTube video, so I'll just plug in one of my YouTube videos so I don't get a takedown. I will open up my, let's do the pumpkin nights video. So I do have this muted, but when I start talking, it will show me live captions and I can put those captions at the bottom of the screen or I can put them right on the video. It works if you tilt your screen as well. And it also works if you lower the YouTube video so that it's just a little picture in picture, basically. Once you wanna get rid of it, just click on your volume button and click on the captions icon to disable it or enable it again. 
so useful and extremely, extremely good for accessibility. Project Soli, which is that radar detection up at the top, this allows your phone to detect if you're reaching for it, so it will automatically turn on the screen, which does work quite well, I'm very happy to report. It allows you to do things like face unlock, so I can lock my phone, automatically do face unlock and it unlocks for me, which is extremely fast as well. I can also swipe to silence phones, or as you can see, I swipe to wave at Pikachu. More on that in just a bit. You can also swipe to switch songs if you're listening to music in one of your favorite applications. So I did mention the live wallpaper here, which includes Pikachu and it's one of the cutest things ever. You can choose to enable your Pikachu wallpaper by going to your settings clicking on display, clicking on styles and wallpapers, then clicking on wallpaper. I know a lot of clicks for this one. And then scrolling down. You will find an option in here called come alive. So click into come alive and you will see an option within the come alive folder that says expand your collection. When you click on expand your collection, you will see the option to download the Pokemon Live wallpaper. Now this does not require the Wave Hello app. It does tell you that you can play more at the bottom and download the Wave Hello application, but you don't need that. You just need to download the Live wallpaper. Once you have that downloaded to your phone, if you click into an application, he will notably turn his head over to your application, which is very cute. You can also wave to the Pokemon. Uh, you can also pet the Pokemon. You can switch between a few different options. My favorite, of course, is Eevee. I love patting Eevee on the head. It's so freaking cute. It's definitely a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that I kind of love. Now, Face Unlock, you did see me demo that. That's available underneath your security options. You do have to put in your pin code whenever you want to enable Face Unlock. Uh, you can also disable it if you get tired of it underneath these options. This has a couple of different options I wanted to point out. First, you can use it to sign in and to accept payments through Google Play, for example. You can also have it skip your lock screen or have it just wake up your display and then you have to swipe for your pin. You can also have it require confirmation whenever you use Face Unlock in applications, which means it will have a extra step. Not as convenient if you want to use Face Unlock, but you might want to use that depending on your threat vector. Now the last tip I wanted to recommend to you is within the camera. We have a couple of different changes with the camera on the Pixel 4. First there is Night Sight, which is found as a separate camera option. So you just switch to it by swiping back and forth. Uh, whenever you use Night Sight, I highly recommend holding your camera still or sticking it on a tripod. I said camera. Holding your smartphone still or sticking it on a tripod uh, or else your pictures will come out somewhat blurry. Also, I wanted to mention Lens. If you click on Lens, Lens allows you to do a Google search based on whatever's in the picture. So if I point at this poster behind me and I hold down or I click search, this is going to automatically search for that picture and give me content related to it. Now it did find related content. It found Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon. It found the time. It found the data about where this was located. Now Google Lens is really useful if you're looking for specific information about a company or if you're looking to translate something on the screen or if you're looking to scan a barcode, for example, you can do all of that with Lens. So if I point it at this pillow, which is sitting on this couch next to me, I'll click search and it's automatically going to bring up things that I think it matches with, and it actually got it correct. So it did find pictures of this cosmic heart from Sailor Moon. So I know that it got got it correct, and I'm able to find the name of this item, for example. Uh, you can point it at things like other languages that are written down and translate them straight within the application. You can point it at barcodes, or you can point it at other uh, items, other products that are on your screen just to find out what those items are. It's a very cool, very useful app. I use it a lot whenever I'm looking for the name of an item or a price within a store, or if I'm looking to translate languages. So that's about everything that I wanted to show you on the Google Pixel 4 XL. I hope that you got some really good information out of this video. 
if you enjoyed it and if you want to see more tutorials kind of like this one, definitely comment below and let me know what you would like me to do tutorials on. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it and please share it with your friends as well. Let's build this community together. Again, my name is Shannon Morris. Thank you so much to my s'mores. I will see you in the next video. Bye.